Of miracles where kids get caught by. Let's see if you know it. Yes, by Jesus' love. Where kids get caught by Jesus' love. Everybody, I am absolutely excited to be with you here today as our adventure continues on the north shore of Galilee. Look at this wonderful view. We have the Cedar Ridge Mountains, we've got the sea, we've got the greenery, and aren't we blessed? Children, once again, and parents. And whoever else is online with us, are you ready to get caught by Jesus' love? Of course you are. Why? Because Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. He loves you and me so, so, so much. Children, and again, parents, do you remember what our cast and draw nugget was from last week's adventure? If you've forgotten, let me help you. It taught us that Jesus is our healer and we are free. And I hope you remember Born the Butterfly. There she is on the screen in blue in front of us. She flies high and she flies free, just like us, knowing that Jesus is our healer. Well, do you know what, kids? I've got so used to climbing up the mountaintop every morning for some quiet time with Jesus and a word of prayer. I sure will miss this when we leave Galilee to go home. But I'm going to have to find myself my own secret place to carry on these quiet moments with Jesus because I've absolutely loved being alone on top of the mountain for prayer. So before we move on to the rest of our day, I think we definitely need to pray on the mountaintop. 
Good evening, church. Let us bow in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you that we can meet you again this evening. We have heard some amazing stories about you, Lord, and your amazing miracles. We have heard that we just need to follow you, and we have heard that you heal and give freedom. I pray that tonight, as we learn something more incredible about you, that we will help us to approve you, appreciate you, love you, and serve you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Why, thank you, Elia, for that beautiful, beautiful prayer. And I sincerely do hope that these adventures that we're going on together in Galilee are teaching us what a miraculous God we serve and what a miraculous God, um, and that a miraculous God like Jesus loves us, loves us so much. Oh, aren't you guys getting hot here on this mountaintop with, this, with the sun beating down our backs? I would much rather be at the seaside having a swim in the Sea of Galilee. Let's all run down the mountain, run quickly, 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 and let's get into our swimsuits and dive into that beautiful sea. Wow, the water feels so amazing on my body and I feel so blessed to be swimming in the Sea of Miracles. Right, guys, I think it's time for us to get out though and dry off. I know that the day is still young, but there's lots and lots still planned for us. <gasps> What's going on? This is a huge surprise. Look who's joined us on the beach. It's an antelope. And I believe his name is Abel the antelope. Oh, okay. Somebody who lives here in Galilee has just told me that this is Abel the oryx. And oryx is a special kind of, uh, of antelope that lives here in Galilee. They say that oryxes like to play games that test their strength by clashing their horns together and prancing around. Now, these contests take terrible bravery. Abel can be a part of our crew any day, hey kids? We love being around bravery. And lucky for us, Abel is just like Born the Butterfly. He also wants to come with us to Aunt Simona's house. Do you remember Aunt Simona? That's Peter's mother-in-law. She has the house of many, many stories where people, are, where people sit for hours and hours listening to stories of Jesus' miracles. And you know what's even better? At Aunt Simona's house, we get to eat the most delicious meal because she's forever preparing healthy food for all the guests that come in to listen to her stories. So let's go. Let's get to Aunt Simona's house. I bet that she has a great story to tell us today. And do you remember what we call her stories? I hope you do. But if you don't, I'm going to remind you. We call her stories the catch of the day. Are we ready to listen to our catch of the day from Aunt Simona? We sure are. Oh, sorry. Hi, kids. Um, welcome back. Shalom. Sorry, I look a bit disappointed. Um, I've been... I've been looking for some other guests, my daughter, my son-in-law, Simon, and some other fellows of Jesus. They were coming to visit me, and it's, it's so late, I'm not too sure what's happened. Maybe something happened. I'm somewhat afraid. I should have been here a long time ago, and now I'm really starting to get worried. I feel so worried. It gets me thinking about another time. When Simon, now called Peter, um, he was also afraid. Let me tell you what happened. Peter told me that Jesus and his followers left Capernaum in a boat. They wanted to go to a quiet place on the other side to be, have alone time. I was expecting Peter home that night, but by 9 p.m. they were still not home, and by 10 p.m. They were still not home. By 11 p.m., they were still not home. By 12 p.m., 
they were still not home. Even by 2 a.m. in the morning, they were still not home. To make matters worse, there was also a terrible storm on the water. These seas of Galilee can be tricky at times. Can you see why I'm so worried now? I hope it's not one of those nights. I really do. Peter told me that while it was, I was waiting and worrying, Jesus had done the most incredible miracle. He said that they were trying to leave, but 5,000 men, women and children were following them. He told me that Jesus was so amazing, that he had just kept on talking and healing and healing and healing. And before they knew it, the sun was down. Peter said that they told Jesus to send the crowds away because it was late. Everyone was hungry and, and tired, they thought. But Jesus had another plan. Well, Andrew went looking and found a little boy with five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus blessed the bread and the fish. And guess what? They could feed all those people and there were leftovers. Well, he said that the people wanted to make Jesus king right there and then. Peter said that got the, so confused because after that, Jesus told them to get into the boat and he was sending the crowds away. Peter said that they became suspicious and they began asking themselves if they should be following this man, Jesus. And then he said that a crazy storm hit the waters just like the storm tonight. But after that, something out of this world happened. Peter said there was something out in the water, like walking on the water. He told me that they all screamed and they were terribly afraid. But then Jesus told them, do not be afraid. It is me. And then Peter said that just to be sure, he said to Jesus, Lord, is it you? Then tell me to come onto the water. I was absolutely shocked that Peter had said that to Jesus. And I gasped as he told me this. But I gasped even deeper when Peter told me that Jesus said, Come. And then Peter went walking on the water. I was shocked and then a bit sad when Peter told me that when he saw that the waves has become with waves were coming. He was very afraid and he was trembling. He was trembling with anxiety and he shouted, Jesus, save me. Of course, Jesus saved him. After all that, Peter said that they got onto the boat and that suddenly they were on the other side. He said that they fell down and they worshipped Jesus. We knew then that this was just not an earthly king, but the son of God. They weren't afraid anymore. And Peter arrived back home, soaking wet, and this incredible story. And after hearing that, we also didn't feel afraid any longer. What? Oh, Auntie Simona, thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful story. We had an amazing time and that was such a true test of bravery. Thank you, Aunt Simona. Goodbye. See you next time when we come for our next story and wonderful meal. Wow. What a mir miraculous story from Aunt Simona, guys, don't you think? It's no wonder that Abel the antelope followed us to Auntie Simona to hear the story. I mean, the games that the Oryxes play to test their strength by clashing their horns is also a true test of bravery. Now, with the bravery that Jesus gives us, we can meet every test and every challenge and overcome every test and every challenge because of Jesus's power, Jesus's bravery in us. Look at Abel, the Oryx, <clears throat> with the other Oryx clashing horns to show their bravery. They are not scared at all. And that's how we need to be. That's the kind of faith that Jesus requires from us. Mark 6 verse 50 says, 
Do not be afraid. I am so happy that Simona could tell us that story, you know. I know Jesus will help me to be brave just like Abel, the brave Oryx. Thank you so much, Riley. I'm also sure glad that Auntie Simona told us that story. That really mo motivates me to be brave and to trust in Jesus way more and way more every day. Now, children, do you remember that every week we, we draw a cast and draw? Um, we have a cast and draw nugget every week. And our cast and draw nugget for this evening is that Jesus is the son of God and we are brave. Let's say it together. Let's say it together. Jesus is the son of God and we are brave, just like Abel the Oryx. Now, at this time, it's the slot where we listen to a beautiful, beautiful song that will bring us closer to God and make us realize how more wonderful he is to us each day. Let's hear what the song is all about. That was a beautiful, beautiful song. Jesus died, so we all are winners. Brave and faithful winners. Brave and faithful winners. At this time, we're going to be closing our day here off in Galilee. Um, we've had a wonderful time up on the mountain in prayer, swimming in the sea at Aunt Simona's house, listening to that wonderful story about the miracles of Jesus. Um, eating her delicious food and learning lessons on bravery and meeting Abel the Oryx too on the beach. How bizarre is that? An antelope on the beach? And now it's time to close our eyes and um, end our day in prayer. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that all we need to do is trust in you and to not be afraid. 
Thank you for teaching us about bravery through nature, Lord. Thank you that you are brave and that through you, we can be brave. Help us to be brave, dear God, to not be afraid of any challenge. Please bring us safely back next week to meet with you again as we learn more about your miracles at the Sea of Galilee. What a privilege tonight has been, Lord. Grant every one of us a safe and peaceful night's sleep. And may we ponder on you that when we wake up in the morning, that you are the first thing on our mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's it from Galilee, guys. Get to your bunk beds because tomorrow morning is up early to the mountain for prayer and a whole new adventure. Enjoy your sleep and take care.